Hi and welcome to this video with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well this week's blog is very specific, it's about open water swimming and how to sight when you're doing it. Now we've gone through this before but this weekend I went to Liquid Leisure um, and took along a little head camera that I could have on whilst I was swimming to give you a swimmer's eye view of actually what you should be seeing when you sight. I thought that might be useful. Now just to recap, what we're doing is we're doing a sighting and a breath and that's how you go along. You can sight every stroke, every three to four strokes, even every six strokes once you know that you're swimming in a straight line. Okay, we're going to go over to the computer, we're going to have a look at that, then we'll come back and just round it off. Okay, so here we are in an open water swim in a group session. It's not me leading this session, it's Michelle. And we're just waiting for an instruction. And Michelle's now saying, right, let's swim to the yellow boy. And we're just going to have a look at that yellow boy right now. Okay, there it is. So this is the yellow boy we're actually going to swim to. And if we can't see this when we're swimming, because it's quite small, you see the heads here, all the heads, and it's not that much bigger than a head. Behind it, we've got this very nice shape. And you should always look for some kind of shape or some kind of sighting point that you can view. If you can't see a boy, you can see that. Okay, so we're actually going to be looking to this shape because just to the left of that dip is the boy itself. Now, as we come straighter, and that's actually what we're going to be heading towards. So our view is something like that every time we raise our head. We're going to come up again and you can see we're heading in the right direction and when we're sighting in open water you don't breathe as you look forward because you might get a face full of water. You look forward and then you breathe when you turn to the side and that's why we've got this look forward turn to the side every time I sight. seem to be heading in the right direction. We're fast coming up to the boy now. The picture's slightly truncated like a long lens, um, so it's slightly distorted. We're actually closer to that boy than we think we are. And there's Chris, and behind him there's Joe. Now we're just going to show you another boy to sight to. We're going to start this here. We're just going to look at this boy here, which is across the lake at Liquid Leisure, here's the clubhouse, and behind this boy we've got another clump of trees. Now I'm just going to let it run all the way to that boy. You see what you can see as I raise my head. Probably going to do it every two strokes. You don't get a lot of time to see something, so you've got to be fairly good at identifying what you've got to identify and then looking away and breathing. If you don't see what you want to see the first time, then just simply look the next time you stroke and you'll be fine. And there we are, we've reached it. Okay, so this time we're going to show you what it's like to follow someone's feet and the difference that you see when you're actually following someone's feet. Now Trevor's going to set off here, I'm going to be following him. We're actually going to be going to this pink boy here. Doesn't look like it there, but that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, let's go. No, let's go. Now, the sight I'm going to see is slightly different. I didn't uh, sight there. I'm going to sight next time, and there we go. You can see that because Trevor's in front of me, it's much more difficult to see that boy. That boy's actually also smaller. So I'm liable to sight more. And the second time I looked, I can actually get a much better view. But Trevor's actually heading off in that direction. And I'm heading off in that direction. So do I follow his feet or not? Well, as this is a particular exercise, I will follow his feet. I jumped on them there. Now I'll look again. And he's still slightly off but he's heading back in the right direction. He's taking a sight too. But you can see how much more difficult it is to see when you're following someone's feet. So you might have to, to literally sight much more. Now you can see Trevor's come back in line and we're heading directly towards 
the boy again. And you can see his feet, I'm right on his feet, and he's saving me a lot of energy. I'll say thank you Trevor. And that's, you see, the difference between sighting without following feet and following feet. OK, so this time we're heading towards the end of Liquid Leisure, which is a square. So you're heading down one side, then you turn and head across and still going slightly in the same direction, round another boy and head back. So let's see what's happening here. Now I'm just sighting and there's the boy I'm heading to. And from that boy, I've got to head off in this direction to that boy. OK, there's a swimmer in front of me. There's the boy and there's the next boy we're going to. Now when I come up to the boy, I'm going to take a stroke past it, and I'm going to revolve completely once towards the boy on my back. Here we go, I'm going to take that complete revolution, and now I'm going to check again where the next boy is. You can see the next boy is down there, not to be confused with that one. Uh, but I'll check again, because you don't necessarily get that view the first time. I think I've got it now, so I'm just swimming. Check again, I can see that boy, but I'm slightly off. And you can see I'm checking again, and I think I've gone probably three yards to the left of where I actually want to ideally go. So it's very easy when you turn to get slightly disoriented and not follow exactly the line that you want to follow. OK, so there you have it, um, a swimmer's eye view of sighting in open water. And the three elements that we illustrated were basic sighting and what you can see when you raise your head. And what you can see when you raise your head is not necessarily enough to actually point you in the right direction if you're just looking at the boy. So you want to look at the background to the boy and see if there's any specific shapes you can follow, such as trees or buildings that you can actually see, that will point you in the right direction if you can't actually get a sight of what you're doing. Secondly, if you're following someone's feet, you will see their feet in the water. That's perfectly OK. They somewhat blur the view in front of you. But if you can see they're going off, you have a decision to take. Do you follow their feet or do you go directly to the boy that you know is going to be the short distance, which is a straight line? OK, and the third element, rounding a boy. Once you round a boy, especially if you turn over onto your back to do it, which tends to be the fastest way, recite where's the next boy, how quickly can I get there, am I disoriented, what can I look at other than that boy to actually get me sighting correctly. Do all those three things and your open water swimming is going to be much shorter than if you just go all over the place when you're swimming. OK, hopefully you've enjoyed that swimmer's eye view. Next week, something completely different. Thanks for watching. Have a good week. Enjoy your triathlon.